Hello everyone, Skilled at Luck here with some Pokemon. We are actually going to be playing some Expanded today. I know our first uh, go through was Standard, but I wanted to go ahead and change it up with uh, some Expanded because I love the format. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I know a lot of people aren't super excited because some of it's a little faster than usual, but it's still meant to be a pretty fast format overall. Well, today I definitely want to go ahead and take advantage of the speed of the format with a deck that I really enjoy that is actually going to be using the Bird Trio. So we're going to be using Moltres, Zapdos, and Articuno as our main attacker. Um, typically we're just looking to either knock something important out with our 210, but most importantly we're looking to Sky Legends GX. So with this attack, what we're trying to do is go ahead and knock out uh, a couple shamans. Uh, ideally, if we can knock out three of them, that's just the best situation ever. You get to take six prizes off of that. Um, but typically, we're just wanting to take some prizes off that, uh, soften something up that's maybe a three prize or hit for 210 on our next attack and win the game from that point. So, we're just trying to take advantage of the amount of setup that the bench has in the expanded format with um, this GX right here. A massive 300 HP. So we're able to do this really quickly. We can do this uh, going second. Um, we can win the game going on our first turn as, um, with this deck. Uh, how we're setting up our Moltres Articuno Zapdos is actually going to be uh, through Ho-Oh. So we're going to be trying to use our Rebirth ability to uh, get a few Ho-Ohs in the graveyard or in the discard pile and then uh, have one of each color energy so we can uh, Rebirth our Ho-Oh. So it has three different en um, energy on it and um, give our energy attachment to be the fourth one, and then throw out our supporter for the turn being Ninja Boy, so we get to put the Ho-Ho back into the deck, put our Bird Trio into play, and deal massive damage off of that, On as, again, as soon as our first turn going second. Um, Ho-Ho does require a coin flip, so um, with that being said, we want to go and throw as many of these in the discard pile as possible so we can make it very likely. I mean, once you hit two or three hoos, uh, it's in your favor that you're going to get at least one heads and be able to do that. Uh, we're going to be using essentially Shaman as a big part of our game plan, just like any other deck in the expanded format. But we run four of them because we want to see it, we want to abuse it, we want to do as much card draw as possible without having to use our supporter for the turn. Because we don't want to use our supporter for the turn until after we've gotten to Ninja Boy at least one time. Um, we run Clefairy because Clefairy has a really powerful metronome ability. We can use our Ninja Boy to bring out Clefairy instead of Bird Trio to take a big knockout on a Dragon-type Pokemon, uh, oftentimes ADP. We can actually one-shot ADP with its own attack, set up our Ho-Oh for our next Ninja Boy, or set up a Bird Trio for our next turn attack off of ADP's attack as well. So Clefairy can do some massive damage, and it's just one of my favorite parts of this deck. Marshadow, similar situation to Clefairy. We're just trying to hit for weakness because it gets to use any of our other attacks because of its a Shadow Hunt ability. Um, and then Dedene, because, again, we're just trying to uh, get through our deck as quick as possible. On to the items. We're running our Battle Compressors, dumping our ho and Energies to set everything up. Dowsing Machine, because we are a turbo deck, we're going to have a hard time not seeing what we want to see. So we want to often reuse cards, reuse a Great Catcher, or Field Blower, so, or um, a, a Target Whistle that we may have had to discard to our um, a Dedene early on. Uh, just some kind of reusing ability, uh, sometimes using another battle compressor for the turn is just very important. Um, so we use that field blower, um, really good against um, our uh, Necrozma decks and just a lot of different, just small interactions. Great catcher um, to go ahead and pull up to deal, to um, be our gust effect most of the time outside of Guzma. Ordinary rod, because sometimes if you draw our per trio, uh, you got to have a way to put it back in the deck because once you've seen all of them, your Ninja Boy is a lot worse. Uh, similar, but more often it's going to be Clefairy and Marshadow that we're really trying to get back into our deck because of the fact that they are one ups in certain matchups and very important in certain matchups. Uh, our Quick Balls, uh, Scoop Up Net, Target Whistle. Um, sometimes people, once they get to know what you're doing, they might end up discarding their Shamans rather than playing them so they don't have that... Liability, well, you can force their liability. You can target whistle and then dowsing machine and target whistle again, and that's four prizes if they discarded two shamans. <laughs> our trainer's mail is four copies because, again, very important to turbo through our deck. Our four ultra balls, um, 
three versus Seeker because with this deck, we're not trying to play as late of a game as certain ones are. Um, so that's just not as important in this deck as others. And our supporter for turns typically Ninja Boy because we have a lot of items in here. Chaotic Swell, um, just a good disruption card in certain decks. We're just going to really need that. Guzma is our gusting ability in uh, for after we Ninja Boy. Uh, it can be very critical. Our triple Ninja Boy float stones uh, for being able to get out of the active on certain cards that we don't need there. It's going to be very common. And then our total of 10 energy. So that's the deck. Uh, hadn't been changed very much over the course of the time. I don't think there's anything that's come out in uh, Darkness of Blaze or anything like that that has actually made this deck list want to change. So that being said, let's go ahead and jump into at least one, maybe two games. Let's see how it goes. These games can be fast, so there's a good chance that we can get a couple of games into this. So some of our good matchups that we're looking for, uh, Mad Party's been very popular, um, ADP Zacian's been very popular, that Clefairy is just so brutal against that matchup. If we can set up a Clefairy to attack before they get their first uh, actual attack with ADP, we can knock out a ADP and then follow it up by uh, knocking out a Zacian if they still can't take out our Clefairy. So, super brutal stuff in this format. So it looks like we're going first, definitely not ideal. Um, got not a bad hand. I'm going to go ahead and throw this up because we want everything else in our hand to be live. Find out what we're playing against. Looks like... Might be some variation of Pikaram. Not super familiar with this deck. I mean, it would make sense with their sleeves. Let's see. Don't want to throw down that Shaman. Yeah, it is Pikaram. So that's very interesting and not good for us at all with our current hand. Let's see if we can uh, maybe set up. That's Ultra Ball is definitely a good start to all this for us. And knowing that they run Silent Lab, we're Definitely going to want to go a little deep on our shame this turn in particular. So, Marshadow is in the deck, and it is definitely an important piece of what we're doing. Uh, don't want to get anything here. I'm going to go ahead and draw a couple cards. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and Trainer's Mail first. Just need to thin our deck as much as possible. Do need a couple more energies. I'd love to see a Battle Compressor pretty soon. I will go ahead and... Uh, don't really have to... Oh, I can go ahead and grab a ho here and Quick Ball it away. Drop it for another Shaman. Get a draw three and then have Scoop Up Net to continue to extend this turn as long as we draw some okay cards. We did get the water energy we're looking for, but not uh, very good ways to use it. So we don't have a good next turn set up quite yet. Well, we do. We do have access to our things. Um, let's see here. I want to go ahead and... What's our hoe weak against again? Water? So we, they cannot one-shot us without GXing. So... I'm going to go ahead and do that. Go ahead and take a coin flip. Get as much information out as possible. Not excited about that draw either. 
So we're going to pass turn. So right now we only have one coin flip available for our first attack turn, which is not very great. Um, with them being hitting weakness on our bird trio, not excited about that either. It looks like they might not have too great of a hand themselves with the fact that they only drew two off of their shaman. So we will definitely see where we're going with this. I'm always excited to see uh, the Peak Rom deck in action expanded because I know a lot of people really like Peak Rom and a lot of people were scared that it was going to fall off a standard even though it started to see more play recently. Um, so people putting in that extra effort to make Peak Rom good in expanded is super cool. Though it is very good in standard still to this day thanks to Crushing Hammer. But we have all the old tools for Peak Rom and some tools that it never got to really use. Uh, I'm super stoked to see what it can do this turn. Well, I'm stoked to see it, but I'm also not looking forward to what it's going to do to me this turn. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, okay. So they do have a lot of access to things. If they just find a Thunder Mountain, then our uh, bird trio is knocked out. And we're going to have a lot of work ahead of us. They probably have another energy switch based off of that play. Though I don't think they can attach to anything but that. Yes, yeah, so they only get one energy out of this. But they get their attack, which will knock out, take three prizes, set up their peak at their Raichu Raichu. So we do need a... Mm, we didn't need that. <laughs> that is certainly not what we need. <laughs> Woo! I think this one is just about uh, sealed away. I'm pretty confident we might not be able to win this game anymore. We really, really needed a good draw there. We're not going to be able to ninja boy this turn. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and end, see if we can maybe find our Chaotic Swell. Uh, we found actual nothing, so cool. So that being said, it looks like we're just going to pass. It would take a lot of effort for them to pull off their GX here to be able to knock out both of our Pokemon. So we have one turn where we can Chaotic Swell, find Marshadow. Like, there's not a whole lot we can do here. It's very likely that this game is just over. I am interested by that choice of play. Oh, they didn't have an ability for the Zeroar, and they probably forgot about that. Silent Lab's so weird in here, but at the same time, it's so good against the format. Yeah, we didn't find anything, so that is going to go to our opponent. Uh, there's a chance there that if we had gone second, we could have uh, played through all this, but the Silent Lab was definitely the deal breaker. So let's go ahead and go into the next game. Maybe hit something that we can uh, do a little bit more than just drawing cards. I'm not excited to see another Pikachu right there. If we hit another of the same matchup, this might be a very rough time for us. But hey, we won the coin flip, so that means that we at least get to go first or go second. So I'm not I do not want to go first. No. So opponent can go first. Uh, we do get a lot of these kind of hands where we start a Shaman, but that's no big deal because scoop up net, balls, we have plenty of ways to power through our deck with this hand. So I am very excited about that. Show us the Pika. Oh, uh, Dedenne, close enough. I'm going to assume that this is Pika Rom. Oh, metal energy. But we get to go for the dock. So, we're going to start off by getting rid of these pesky energies. Let's go ahead and grab a ho -Oh. We 
Let's go ahead and pitch that. And we're going to go get another ho -Oh. Ultra Ball. Pitch these. Let's go ahead and grab this Shaman. Double check a couple of things. We have plenty of our Pokemon. Looks like we got plenty of that. Plenty of that. Down to two Ninja Boy in the deck. But we have everything we need otherwise. Double check. We don't have four Water Energy Prize. We have one prize. So we're good. We, we should have no problem finding everything we need this turn. I would like to find a water energy before I use the scoop up net so I can scoop up the active one. And it matter. So found a ninja boy. Found. Uh, so let's go ahead and pitch these. Go for another shaman. Come on, battle compressor. We got four of them in ya. Oh, well, we found the water energy, so that'll work too. I actually found it the best way possible by being able to go get a ho -o. Why not have to pitch it immediately? Let's find out all our information before making another play. So we do have that. Go ahead and scoop up. Bring you active. Throw our energy on, Ninja Boy. We don't need this ho -oh anymore. He's, he's just trouble. He's not a good card anymore. We don't need him. We need, we need these guys. Go ahead and Trinity Burn for the Donk. So, I know it wasn't exciting just because opponent didn't have much of a hand, but that is part of the game. Uh, if you get to go second, your opponent can, um, is going first. They don't get to play a supporter right now. So, um, with that being the case, we can abuse a lot more bricks that way, and that's why this deck is a reasonable deck to play. If the opponent had a chance to play a supporter, maybe they could have used a professor research or something of the like and drawn out of that brick of theirs. Maybe they weren't a brick once they uh, started for their turn. But um, with how little time we give them to catch up on that kind of stuff, that is, again, why we play this deck in this format. We'll go ahead and do one more game since we had a game where we just didn't get to really do a whole lot going first. And then we had this other game where we just donked um, a person that just had energy attached on their Dedenne. Probably was an ADP Zacian deck um, based off of Dedenne and a Metal Energy. So with that information, we definitely... Would like to play a little bit more. Uh, cool thing is, even when we start the Ho-Oh, -Oh, it's fine. Uh, Scoop Up Net can put it back into our hand and make things not as tragic. So we are going first in this game. We drew a Battle Compressor, so that's just absolutely awesome. Let's Chaotic Swell, so the one turn that matters to them doesn't matter. Although they get to Iron Rule GX, um, which will be a problem because we won't be able to attack um, on the following turn. Um, so, but I'm probably okay with that. Go ahead and throw these in there. Actually, I can go ahead and throw each of the energy in there that I need to go ahead and do this quicker. Go ahead and quick ball that away. Find a shaman. Throw this float stone on our ho -o. Just in case we don't need to net it, we can just retreat it. Gain all our information early. There's a tails. So we got a dowsing machine, which is super cool. 
That does get us a Battle Compressor play again. So I'll go ahead and toss these because we do have everything else. Get the back compressor. Improve our versus seekers and get hose in the yard. Uh, let's see here. We do want to go ahead and toss these. Try another ho. -o. We got it. Nope. There we go. And we can pass it over to them. So this game should be a little bit more interesting again because they get an extra turn thanks to their GX attack. I do think this is a non-ADP Zacian list, more than likely. Um, they were a little bit more common uh, until recent months when people realized how good ADP Zacian was instead, but it looks like I'm wrong. It is ADP Zacian because that double dragon is there specifically for that. So we are fighting against the big boy. Uh, now, question is, does opponent know how badly they get wrecked by Clefairy. Because if they don't know, they about to know. Okay, they're Chaotic Swell deck too, so it doesn't matter on that. But if they don't know, they about oh, they about to know, friends. They are about to know the sheer power. The sheer power of Clefairy. <laughs> This is just my favorite play in the whole format. I don't care. I'm just so happy. This is, uh, nothing is better than getting to show the opponent how badly their deck loses to Clefairy. <laughs> oh, boy. I traded a Ho-Ho for a Clefairy. <laughs> Knock that boy out. Normally, they concede after this just because... I don't know why anyone would want to keep playing this game. <laughs> oh. Because now our ho that's on the bench, just versus seekers turn into a, a, whatever we need next turn if we need something that's not Clefairy, because they're only getting one prize. We get to do whatever we want. And the ordinary rod shures this game up. Because now, if they decide to knock out the Clefairy, we can. Ordinary Rod it back into the deck. Um, Ninja Boy, the Ho away for Clefairy, use Zacian's attack against it for 230 for the knockout. And it looks to me, based off of what they've done so far, that they do plan on setting up the Zacian rather than attacking with the Cabalion. They do feel the pressure of the Clefairy we have active. Oh, nope. Can... Okay, so it has to be an active Pokemon. What does our tech do here? If there's a save of 60 more, so that's definitely not what we need to do. But we do have the ability to just go ahead and trade the Clefairy away so we can have it for later. Or go ahead and Guzma also. So, I mean, we, we win the game. I'll just go ahead... We'll go ahead and Ninja Boy. Trade this Clefairy away. Get our Bird Trio. Show them who is boss. Trinity Burn. So that... Oh, I miscounted our prizes. <laughs> We're still so far in here. For some reason, I thought we were taking three prizes there, but yeah, th there's just no way they won this game. Like, once you take the first knockout with the uh, Clefairy, they fall so far behind. I get excited and have a great time. Our opponent just, yeah. <laughs> so, that is the deck, though. That is our Ninja Birds. 
or I like to call them Ninja Boids. It is an awesome deck, and honestly, it's probably going to be a deck for a long time in the expanded format because of just how much power it actually has. So just again, here's the list, and I do plan on doing more content with the expanded format and standard format, so please like, subscribe, uh, continue to support by just watching these videos. I definitely appreciate any of it and definitely want to continue making uh, content for you guys. So with that being said, um, thanks for watching the video and on to the next one.